recording. There. So, it always helps to have a more human perspective uh, when dealing with some of these stories. Uh, in, in the Muffler Man story, uh, we actually went and talked to the shop owners to get an idea about how the policies and the rules were affecting them specifically. And now, um, now we have an issue of protests breaking out over the George Floyd death. But it's coming to a town near you. Now, I don't have the art of, uh, the, the, the link pulled up. Earlier, I did a video of a link, and uh, we've opted to leave it out of this video, showing that there are not just protests happening in these larger urban areas, but now they're, called, they're coming to smaller, more rural towns. Um, in these earlier videos, I, I guess I have to recap some of this. I disagree with this. I don't. I don't know, and I, I don't know if it's a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea. So let me let me start with this story because this is why it sets off uh, something of a red flag, and, and and then I will talk to you about why I don't think this is a good idea. Antifa warns. This is from a few nights ago. F the city tonight. We move into residential areas before Twitter account was shut down so this this person I'm, I'm not thinking this is the person but there was a person who had their twitter account shut down be from antifa saying that they were going to start moving into smaller more rural areas for rioting so what's been happening and um you can you can see in another video i did called this is deeper than race is we have these rioting groups these these bad actors under the cover I'm saying they're, I'm use, they're using this as an excuse to riot. And then you have some other people who are just generally angry. I, I won't get into the motive or the heads. And this is what I don't like about these, these riots, and, uh, all this chaos that's happening. is when, when we get into the heads of people and we say this is because of racism, this is because of anger, because they're disenfranchised, this is because of they feel oppressed, um, we can get into some some places because I don't I don't think one I, I don't like when we keep saying that these people are oppressed I don't think Americans know what oppression is um, Uyghur Muslims in China know what oppression is uh, there's some stuff going on in Nigeria and in South Africa that that you could you could point to but in America what what people are generally talking about is uh, they say systemic racism and systemic racist systemically racist policies that were set up long before we were born like 40s 50s 60s sometimes further back now there's something to be said about american history that still doesn't affect today and that's why i say i, I don't want to get into people's heads the cops are racist i don't think so i don't know i know the cops were cruel the cops are evil it's like i talked about in this in that last video um, we don't need to attribute race. We don't need to attribute motive motive to anything. But what we are seeing is that racism and race is a good cover for bad actions. It's simple. You don't have to question it. You can just assume because you say racism and this entire narrative comes that comes with it comes to the forefront of your mind. Well, these people were historically oppressed and, and they feel disenfranchised. But they're not. It's not a face sitting directly in front of you. Just like when I see Twitter accounts um, of, of younger people posting the riot footage and, and saying, F the police, burn it all down. Like, like this Antifa post that says, F America, Black Lives Matter. You cannot converge the two ideas. Now, in some instances, you can. I think the Black, the Black Lives Matter group started as more of a terrorist riot type deal. But... We'll see where that goes. There's people that are saying, no, Black Lives Matter is a, is a more organized, peaceful protesting. The thing that they have in common is that they feel that America is racist to its core. There's a desire to burn it down. The media has a desire to turn the other eye. We had this. We had that uh, broadcast from CNN where they, he's saying that it's peaceful. It's peaceful. And there's literally a building on fire behind him. 
as they burn the city down. But I mean, there, yes, there, there's a lot of anger here and, and they're swearing at us and, and they're throwing bottles. But, you know, other than that, I mean, they're not doing it in a mean way. They're hedging their bets and they're doing everything they can to get on the good side of this riot. Then in Louisville, we see protesters, we see rioters shooting at the National Guard and then the National Guard returning fire and then the death of one of the rioters. So in these bigger cities, this is what's been going on. And I personally, I don't want to see it come to our smaller towns. Now, Flint, Michigan had a peaceful protest. The police chief got out ahead of it talked to the people there was a face attached to the police force he was an authority figure in the police force they they disarmed themselves they walked with them they marched with them they went to the leaders of the protest they said what do you want let's 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 come together uh, from what I'm hearing and I haven't been able to confirm similar things happen in Saginaw but you have to understand is that Saginaw and Flint are smaller cities that don't necessarily come to mind and the other thing that I'm certain of is that in these bigger areas like Grand Rapids, Detroit, where you're, where you're seeing the violence, you have larger populations of mixed race people, mixed races of people. So you have a lot of black people, you have a lot of white people. You're going to have more bad actors from both sides having an opportunity to come under the simple guise of racism. What does racism have to do with you stealing a TV from Target? What does racism have to do with you stuffing fifths of liquor down your pants and running down the street like it's, you know, like it's um, second Christmas or something? People looting and robbing stores, burning people's places to the ground. I had that video of the man that they burned up his food truck and he was saying, what? Why you burn my food truck down? See, this isn't just racism and I can't emphasize that enough, but it's not bad enough that this is happening it's it's happening and it's spreading and it's coming to these smaller suburban areas these smaller rural towns and um i just heard a story about a journalist that had her information leaked online and rioters came to her house and set fireworks off in her front yard and she didn't live in the big city because they're spreading but this is, this is the momentum that they've built. So here's what I am afraid of. Here's what I'm assuming. Here's what I'm predicting is going to happen. You have a town like Owasso, smaller rural area, not a lot of black population. And people want to show their solidarity. I don't think that's a good idea. I definitely don't think it's necessary. But here's, what I th- here's why. You have... People with this not in my backyard mentality, not in my town mentality. And these aren't city folks. These aren't big city urban liberals. Like conservatives that live in these small rural towns want to be left alone. They, they don't care what you think about them. They're going to be mean. I think this is why a lot of these conservative politicians are, are portrayed as mean because they have the mean dad persona that that, that vibe about them they're putting on the mean face they're they're willing to we had the one the the, the, what was it earlier you know gated communities where they're have their rifles out and they have their shotguns out and they're standing together against these protesters you don't want to see this come to a small town because in these bigger areas where you have a mob coming down the street Countless people, you don't know how many, and you have maybe one or two guys with guns. You don't want to see how that plays out in the town where every other person is armed. There is a lot of guns in these rural areas. They say that America can't be invaded because there's a gun behind every blade of grass. Well, those blades of grass aren't in the urban areas. They're in the rural areas. These people aren't going to be playing around. They're living off of their land. They're owning their property. They don't rent. They don't have the mindset of the of the city people. They don't have the mindset of the renter. They're going to protect what they have. They're going to protect what they perceive as a threat. And if they see a mob of people coming down the street with flames and pitchforks, they're going to start firing their guns. Be it out of fear, whether they're justified, whether or not. And, and probably not. 
And and what's even worse is you think you see bad actors in the urban mobs because there's these these people breaking windows and and taking TVs and stuff. Well, what do you think the bad actors in the gun community is going to be like? In these isolated rural areas where the cops don't have time to get out there. It's going to be a lot worse. You start messing with these people. And so I'm not saying that the protesters are riots. I'm saying I believe that the pro that the rioters will use the protests as a cover and as as an ex, ex, an excuse. And then once the the boldest of the few get that ball rolling, you're going to see other people joining in and this is what civil war looks like. So, there that that's it. That's my concern. Um if you haven't seen the footage of what's going on, now um to the to the person that was uh posting stuff that I shared on uh, on their Twitter page <clears throat> we we got to we got to talk about chaos. We got to talk about bringing up problems without offering solutions. Um I know that people are probably upset with me because I'm saying don't have these protests. It's not a good idea. And you know, I have a story, but I don't think it's necessarily important. It's not because I'm saying like racism doesn't exist. It's just like the first thing people always say, like even my black friends, when I, when I talk about, if you go back to things I've said in the past where I'm talking to, um, was the episode called those black guys that think wrong. And people are saying, you, you act like racism doesn't exist, bro. I'm from the hood. I'm from the hood and I have mixed kids. So you tell me that I think that racism doesn't exist. I know, and I know both sides are just as bad, and I don't need to, nor do I have time to try to explain it to people. Racism is just another form of chaos, and what I'm standing against and what I'm fighting against is chaos, ideology. You're not going to take people's ideologies away from them by standing in the park. If you pose a threat... And you don't have to be an actual threat. If you are perceived as a threat, people are going to get aggressive. And God help you if they have guns. God help you if you're outnumbered and they all have bricks. Because we've seen what happened in the cities. I do not want to see this happening in smaller towns. I don't want to see people's babies getting mob stomped. I don't want to see old men getting mob stomped. We don't need it. Uh, and I, I just, I don't think it's necessary. So to the people that are egging this stuff on, uh, you've already heard what I have to say, the egging on the racism and everything. But like, I think, I think we have um, a, a different situation here. Maybe people just don't know. People want to change the world and they want to, and, and they think this is how you do it. And they're, they're, they're knocking on the front door of, of a dragon and I don't want to see that dragon wake up. So that's where I'll leave it off. Um, always open to, to questions and comments. Uh, and you can uh, reach me at the zero hour at, or I'm sorry, zero for hire at yahoo.com. Or uh, the podcast is the zero hour on iTunes and Spotify. We'll be talking about this a little deeper. I want to keep this video short. So I'll talk to you guys on the podcast.